Well, we were watching uh, uh, the uh, what's it called um, the Indian uh, singing challenge. What's it called? Um, American Idol. The oh. one that the American Idol, but an Indian Idol. Mm. And mm. it's so funny how the the Indian Idol is so. And we, it was a finale, grand finale, a three hour, and it's kind of stretched on a bit. But it was really fascinating because these the contestants are so not competitive with each other they're so supportive of each other Thank goodness. and I, and you know as we're talking about creativity and uh, and you know working in groups and competition or versus group work it just i wonder is it a cultural thing to be competitive uh, versus to have a group mentality or or what um mm. i don't know Because, yeah. you, I mean, we, the ridiculous thing is in schools, at least the schooling that I grew up in, there was this whole, co- and I grew up here in Pakistan, there was this whole concept of competition. Mm. I have to outdo the next person. I have to, out of 35 people, I have to come first versus stay the 35th because somehow if I stay, if my grades are lower, I'll be less productive maybe. I don't know. Or I'll be less knowledgeable. I don't, you know... There's the incentive of competition, mm-hmm. but after a while, that incentive, uh, you know, it can traumatize people, I would imagine. Um, yeah. I just kind of enjoyed the competitiveness of it. But um, I don't know, Nabil, you've never really been competitive, and Dania, like, I don't think you have either. Nope. Um, well, I guess it depends what it is. Like maybe games and, uh, yeah. like, soccer games. and Well, even then, I wasn't crazy competitive but did you have to be were either did you ever have either of you have a concept of competition in in while you were in school nope um it was not not there was really no, no, i mean it's good to have uh what you would call healthy competition where you're trying to outdo the other people but like not in a malicious way i don't know if we have if yeah. we, but even then there was no like uh like oh i did better than you unless like the only thing I could think of was like no one wanted to be last. I don't think like, you didn't want to fail yes. the class because you're like dumb. Wouldn't that be? Yeah. Would that would be a really uh, comfortable feeling to say? You know what? I'll be last. That's that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I you guess. You can move ahead. Wouldn't it be? I I think it would be so comforting. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm sure the people who do feel that who think go ahead, go ahead, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't need to catch up because I know there's nothing, there's no winning there's at no the winning, end. Yeah. Well, and that'll help you. How would you define winning? And then that would help you concentrate on actually like being productive too. As the things a, you actually enjoy doing or would enjoy yeah. working on. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, w- I always look at the extreme bad. just uh, but on a kind of different uh, topic. Like, I think like okay what's the worst thing that could happen like in my life and like the worst is probably like be homeless um and then once you accept like all right yeah like if I'm homeless I'll probably go to homeless shelter and then like figure it out like once you accept that as like a a possible option like then doing things like I don't know applying for jobs uh, studying this studying that uh changing your direction and your career those things like don't or at least the the fright of failure is not um, as strong or potent, if that makes any sense. Because you, yeah. you see that as an option. Yeah, it's just like once you accept that, like being homeless as like a possible option, and not like, I mean, it's not the it's not the best place to be, but like if you try and look at it in an as neutral way as possible, um, then when you go about doing things and thinking and you know failure becomes on your mind Ooh, what if i mm. go into this interview and fail or what if i'm on the job and i get fired because i fail it's like well that's okay like i'll be homeless i'll just be homeless well i was saying i would yeah. rather if you were to choose between a homeless shelter i would rather get a van and then like live out of there yeah the last purchasing option i have <laughs> i'd make before i go homeless is buy a van because <laughs> you can live in that so then... by the way I was just wondering because I can't go on YouTube. Did any of our followers join us today? Uh, we have one viewer. Presumably that's Michael. Um, yes. It's a ninety percent chance. But we're. But it's just. 
I think it's just my. Uh, we have a viewer, and I assume it's Michael. Oh, okay. Unless you okay. have, okay. unless you have our YouTube thing open, then it's just you. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. Okay. I don't. But also remember, we're good. we're probably not going to get any viewers for the next uh, year or two. Yeah, I'm not really concerned about it either. Yes. No, no, I I was just thinking that that oh, kind of helped respond viewers. to things as right. we were talking. So so this bear um, sanctuary, and you say how how did you throw that in there? I was just so surprised that just around the corner from us, there's this whole bear sanctuary. And there was a sad element to it and a happy element to it or a funny element to it. The fact that we're all at retirement mode and we're in the vicinity of a whole group of bears who are retired. And they use the word retired, which is a really, um, it's, it's kind of a misnomer because they're not really retired bears. These are bears who have been abused. And someone decided that these bears should no longer be abused by the abused by uh, making them dance or, or bear baiting and and now they have this quiet space that they're going to come and visit them you know we've been laughing about the fact that we feel like we're bears as well and we should go down and visit them Bigly bear. Um, because we're retired <laughs> yeah but it I was like a, bears. it was surprising uh, that, that that should be something that's set up in the in our vicinity just because it, you know there's not a lot of support for wildlife in this area anyway for animal rights and so on right and just um, to interject um yes. so michael <laughs> has uh, started <laughs> chatting um he says yes. sorry i was studying my main motivation to study is competing also daniel is pretty competitive <laughs> like the tennis games and soccer as well <laughs> i mentioned <laughs> Yeah, I've actually well, that's good competed to against Michael good in both areas. Yes, Michael is very. Uh, he, how do you I, say, his brain? Um, very competitive. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's com he's competitive, but like he's also. I, mean, I guess he's just smart. I think he smart and like he finds. I don't know. I'm gonna say he finds the shortest way to success, but not in like a bad way though, so, like in the smartest way possible. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. Or I noticed that about I, I noticed that stuff. about his brain. He like he he thinks about mm. things. So. Okay. Enough complimenting Michael. <laughs> <laughs> back to the bear subject. Yeah. Well, back we to. We need the... to have him. We need to have him come on. Uh, on the program. Be a guest on the program. Yes. And. Um... <laughs> no, because Michael says try. he's. But I'm lazy. If nobody competes with me, I don't try. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, yeah, none of us are planning to compete in dentistry. So wait, is this bear sanctuary <laughs> in Pakistan, or is, are you talking about one in yes. Pakistan? Oh, okay. It is. It's it's close to where. How many Peter bears do you know? Yeah. How many bears are there? And uh, there are forty bears. This is near Dokeo. Forty. Holy moly. Oh, wow. Four zero. That's a lot. And this is near Dokeo. Yeah, that or? is a lot. Yes, just like it's probably the next exit. Oh, what? And it's yes, I know it's good. I think they said uh, six eight, sixty acres, maybe. I don't know. I you know large acreage. Hmm. And uh, so, hmm. I, and I was thinking for my next story um, that I want to write that there would be the element of the um, dancing bear. And what is that? either it's the just uh, the image of a dancing bear, um, such a it's such a beautiful animal, a bear itself, mm -hmm. and making it dance, which is not I don't know, it doesn't jive the two yeah, it doesn't. concepts of this. Does Bears it? don't dance. It's, yeah. No, they don't, and that's Some exactly of them why the sanctuary has been made because they're made to do things which are not natural to them. Um, yeah, and I wonder, you know, if as humans we're made to do things which are not un which are not natural to us. Mm -hmm. um, sitting at a desk from nine we to would... five is not natural. Sitting at a desk—that's not not natural, I guess. But, but what but if you I have want to, to sit, sit at for a, desk? a while? Don't you? you don't can. you have to sit for a while to to think? And is sitting not more human? I guess not. No, more chair, human would though. be like walking long distances. I don't know. Um, getting sunlight. I would say that's yes. 
yeah. picking picking fruits. So tell me more about what is what comes naturally to humans, and we should just kind of. But also, we uh, what was that argument Nabil makes technically that everything is natural if it's uh, within yes. the realm of possibilities. If doing... Yeah, if we're doing it. If we consider ourselves natural beings, then naturally everything we do is natural. I don't think Monim yeah. agrees with that. Yeah, but they, but in a sense, then it destroys the meaning of the word, the word natural, because yeah. now you can't. I mean, I don't know how you would it's use it broad. anymore. Yeah. Michael says, "Is altruism or competing natural for humans?" I don't know what altruism is. Anika would know. It's doing this. well for. Okay. Altruism means yes to to kind of being good to others so is that is comp competing as we were discussing earlier or oh. altruism are those two natural for human beings is the question that michael is raising um com com competition seems like it would be natural for humans and you know other uh, animals. animals for like territory or uh, yes, yeah, for, for food, territory, for survival. Oh, but yeah. we don't need it. We're not at that point in light in our history, human history anymore, that we need to compete to that the extent that I think that com competitive element in the physical competition of war and other territory gaining uh, endeavors is a very dated concept of I, I competition. Th it's not natural anymore. Yeah, or it shouldn't be. We I would don't say need it's. To. I would say it's probably shifted, right? So it's no longer a physical thing. It's a uh, yes. It's a mental like thing because I mean, cl I mean, obviously there's still people who you know are starving or can't get food or whatever. Um, also monetary as but well. But they're not Money the ones who well. fight. Like you could. There's a big fight between the leader of the company getting more money or the workers getting more money. So the competition shifted in that sense. It's no uh, longer maybe territorial, to mental. now it's monetary. It's mental and monetary. I mean, yeah. yeah, monetary is the medium in which you would trade the value. Yeah. Um, it depends to... where you're talking about, right? Because technically the Israel-Palestine thing is probably still territorial. Right. Um, yes. And but My Michael is but saying... it shouldn't, we should be past that as a human race. Uh, we shouldn't be focused on territory. Yeah. It, what is Michael saying? I agree. What's, with, it, what's Michael saying? He's saying, is it similar to the competitiveness of capitalism versus altruism of That's socialism? Right. Michael's really pulling in the depth here. He's. <laughs> yes, he is. Competitive. I, I com mean. What is the altruism the of socialism? Can we qualify uh, that for me? As in. What does that mean? Like we're yeah, all putting so together true. our resources to help everyone. Oh, gotcha, no gotcha. No matter, yeah. gotcha. Versus gotcha. competitiveness, to, like to oh, equalize. we're yeah. Versus like competitiveness of capitalism is like we're motivating each other to work harder, uh, but for ourselves, not for the mm -hmm. group. Gotcha. Um, and and if the society benefits <clears throat> from our individual endeavors, then that's a plus. I don't think the in, intention is for society to, but in the whole socialism concept, it's the society versus the individual. Right. So you're saying, but you're saying, were you arguing that um, being our uh, competitiveness uh, is no is longer, no longer like necessary or of value? Some of the competitiveness that like we territory. continue should be, should die a natural death. Um, what about like not, mental clearly. warfare? We hold on to it. Hmm? What about mental warfare? Mental warfare. Mental battles, like uh, the battle of the wits. <laughs> yes. Is that something that well, should be happening and occurring among at least a human society? You need some level of tension. You need some te some level of tension for growth, I imagine. Otherwise, you're passive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just and let for things happen. Law reasons, law and order. You need to compete the ideas of right. Two What's different sides. how we should live the live our lives and stuff like that. I guess mm -hmm. we're not. Also, we're not considering that some individuals and many individuals have a very different perspective of. Um, 
And I, I feel that that comes naturally. You could say it's cultivated in them. But the way they uh, behave in life, I mean, the fact that individuals are violent mm -hmm. and it's not about the money or, and it's not about the things they want. It's just about control. They need to control. Um, some are devious. I mean, so some the negative elements no. in humanity are, are basic. Are, you know, we're born with them. And some have them more pronounced than others. Like, well, and then, of course, you have the mental inabilities as well. But, Daniel, you were saying something. Oh, yeah, no, I was going to say that. It reminded me of the Seneg Senegalese, I think they're called, or Senegal, the India, or the island off of India. Where, oh, like, yes, no, it's not yeah. Senegal. It's, uh, it's uh, what's it called? Not yes. Senegal. Se oh, it starts with an S. They're still the, tribal people. The, and then they people go there and they die because they kill the the, the tribal yeah. people kill the the foreigners. But in that case, yes, you could argue people. that the yeah. whole territorial thing. I mean, obviously, there's exceptions to every kind of theory, but I would say that would be an exception because for them, if outsiders came into their land, they could spread diseases like they did for the Native Americans. And being territorial benefits them. They probably also just right? don't know any better, as in like. Uh, you know, this is our land, and you, I don't know who you are, mm. uh, but you are probably a threat because historically uh, other groups of humans would have been threats to you. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, they're sticking with that. And it idea. wasn't even that long ago, too. Like, I think in the 60s, there was like, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, happens today in the form studies. of gangs, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, those are the old, the first type of gangs, I guess you could say. Uh, Actually, gangs probably branched yes. out. Or, or well, I don't know what you, if you want to call them gangs, but let's say tribes of people kind of branched out. The most popular one is the just governments, kind of tribes turned into governments, and then the other direction is gangs. It's gangs. <laughs> just hurt people. <laughs> no, but the other thing That's is, true. I what I have to keep reminding myself, and sometimes you forget this, that when you are in a level of uh, health, financial, social stability yourselves, mm -hmm. it's difficult to imagine those who are not or their lifestyle or their perspective. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if I'm sitting in a comfortable place Skyping um, on a podcast, uh, you know, on a podcast with you guys, mm -hmm. um, there, there are many, many millions of people who... Uh, you know, are probably freezing in the cold, uh, suffering from some kind of health issue, uh, or financially, or are starving, or, you know, they have all these physical needs as well as mental needs. And it's easy for me to intellectualize about human behavior. But mm -hmm. so here's the, the way I'll do a turnaround on that initial groundwork that I was making about I need to be considerate of others' perspective. Mm -hmm. I feel that um, the most brutal competition happens from the most powerful and established people. That's how I see uh, the negative of competition. So yes, there are plenty of people who need to compete to get a basic comfortable life, but the unfortunate thing is that there are a vast majority of folk who are already at the extreme height of comfort Mm -hmm. but still need to compete at a brutal level. And so is that human nature? Is it never going to go away? When you say brutal, what are you referring to? Brutal, I mean, um, whether it's... Talk um, about like... like armed conflict, whether mm -hmm. it's... Um, um, what's it called? A business conflict mm -hmm. of, you know, taking over someone's finances. Water and therefore destroying them, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, controlling masses of people, um, masses of people's intellect and, and the education that you provide. Mm -hmm. So, and well, I guess that's yeah. more power than competition. But, you know, when you're competing with others to get something that you already have plenty of. Right. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess that just boils down to whoever's in control of the 
these most powerful establishments or resources and then them making the decisions that uh, objectively are not uh, I don't know the the most positive uh, decisions for humanity um, but I was also what was the question yeah well <laughs> there's two parts of that too it first the first cool. part the first part when you're talking about who am I to say you know like having all those things already mm -hmm. covered um i've also heard the argument like you if anyone would have the right to say it would be you because you ha do have those things covered like the basics covered so you have the ability to look at society as a whole and uh make those judgments rather than worry about those day-to-day -day things maybe you're right like or i think what you were referring to is more of like i don't have perspective on what it was like to live on that amount during this time um mm -hmm. but yeah i would say um i mean you still have the the right to that opinion of what uh well speaking